Earlier this year, when beavers were found living and breeding on a Devon river, it was very exciting for some, as they'd been extinct in Britain for centuries, but rather inconvenient for others. Official attempts to remove the beavers were challenged by local campaigners, and now a five-year watch period has been set up to study their effects on the ecosystem. Understanding the impact of reintroduced species is important, particularly in light of similar plans to introduce others, the pine martin in Wales, for instance, and perhaps an extinct wildcat, the lynx, one day. So we sent our reporter Rory Galloway to check out those Devon beavers and ask some experts about the implications of what's being called rewilding. I can see it. Yeah, I can see the body shape. It's just up against the edge. That's amazing. All I can see right now is a little bit of brown in the shape, rough shape of an oblong. And it's definitely fur and it's rustling. This European beaver is one of a number that have set up home on the River Otter in Devon. Nobody quite knows how they got there, whether it was an escape or an unauthorised release. I want to find out exactly what their presence could mean for the British countryside. Accompanying me on this field trip is ecologist and re-wilding expert Peter Smith. Now then, Peter, this river's flowing really fast. We've had an awful lot of rain today. Mm. Is this typical for beavers to live in fast-flowing water like this? Beavers can live in a a number of areas. Although we're in the countryside here, this is a completely artificial habitat. The river is now much more channeled, so we see greater problems with flooding. So is that something that the beavers might be able to help with, perhaps? Yeah, it's exactly. Beavers and uplands will create tiny little dams and wetlands. That acts as a giant sponge sucking in the floodwaters. As we come down the river, the beaver will help channel into the surrounding river bank and create a giant sponge. There'll be beaver pools, and that again will absorb floodwaters. Changing the speed of the water flow is one thing, but I've heard that beavers can affect other plants and animals in the local environment. You know, one of the reasons why the waterfall has gone extinct is there's no wetlands. And when we get fast-flowing water like this, that kills waterfalls. So one of the reasons I got into understanding beavers from what could we do to save otters and waterfalls? And the answer was beavers. They are the keystone, the stone in the bridge that keeps all the other stones in place and will do so much good for all of our wetland systems. A kingfisher has just darted past and into the reeds on the left. I'm intrigued by how a species like the beaver can affect so much of the environment around it. So next, I'm off to meet a journalist and rewilding campaigner. Hello, Hello George. Hi. Hi. How nice, you doing? Uh, nice to meet Hello. you. Back in London, George Monbiot and I are meeting in Regent's Park. What will the beavers do in the wild in Britain? So they are a classic example of a keystone species, of an ecological engineer which creates opportunities for many other species to thrive. To me, there's there's no point in just leaving a place if it's got no means of restoring functional dynamics. In other words, if the keystone species, these critically important ecological engineers, such as wolves and lynx and wild boar and beavers, if they're not there then the system can't really look after itself and will require continued management. But if they are there, then we should let it be. Our countryside has changed dramatically in the 400 years since beavers last roamed in the wild. With reintroductions, it's one thing to let them be in an endless wild landscape, but these days nearly all of the land in the UK is owned or managed by people whose livelihoods depend on it. My name's Christopher Price. I'm Director of Policy and Advice here at the CLA, which is an organisation that protects and promotes the interests of rural landowners. Between them, our members own or manage about half the rural land in England and Wales. Do you know of any of your members who have had beavers introduced onto their land? Do you know whether they are in support of that and what would happen, say, if a beaver did flood a particular field of theirs? We have had a number of members who've had reintroductions of various species on their land and in the main to date it's worked well. The important thing is that those who are promoting the reintroductions properly explain what's proposed, explain the likely impacts that it'll have on agriculture and other activities in the area and particularly important from many landowners' perspective is the confidence that there is a concrete exit strategy in place should something go wrong. 
With some species, obviously, that's easing with others. With the, the beavers that have been released in the southwest of England, they're probably quite a, a good model of a, a reintroduction because it will take quite a long time before we know if there's any adverse impacts. So things can be monitored and, and things can be, can be checked. Similarly, with the proposed release of the of pine martins in Wales, a lot of landowners are very sympathetic to that because they have forestry interests and they're concerned that grey squirrels will continue to cause great problems for them. And the traditional methods of grey squirrel control, trapping and shooting, aren't terribly effective or economically viable. And so the reintroduction of pine martins could be a great asset for English and Welsh forestry. I'm surprised by the lack of hostility towards reintroductions from landowners. Obviously, the reintroduction of beavers needs to be carefully managed and monitored in the long term. Back to Peter Smith. Wildlife just needs people to leave it alone. And if we set aside enough land for wildlife, with the right mix of wildlife, with your beavers, your wild horses, maybe one day's lynx, even wolves, you'll have that complex ecology restore itself at no cost. We just have to leave nature alone. That was the ecologist Peter Smith ending that report by Roy.